It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Please stand for a congregational. Well, uh, look like our song is called Victory. Let's get victory in our hearts today. In Jesus. Hallelujah, what a thought Jesus for salvation brought. Victory, victory. Let the power of sin assail heaven, drink and never fail. Victory, victory. Victory, yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in all to me. I am trusting in the Lord. I am standing on his word. Victory, victory. I have peace and joy within since my life is free from sin. Victory. Victory, victory, yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in all to me. Shout your freedom everywhere. His eternal peace declare victory. Victory, let us sing it here below in the praise of every foe. Victory, 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 yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus, give me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah, he is all. To me, we will sing it on the shore when this bleeding pipe is over. Victory, victory, victory. Sing it here and some drone start the everlasting song. Victory, victory, victory. Yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in all to me. can be dismissed for children's church three through nine three through nine intermediate class can also be dismissed at this time rest of if you would turn to matthew 21 mark 11 philippians 4 hebrews 6 james 5 first peter 3 we're just going to do a verse or two in each one of those uh while you're looking those up one of her ladies was having some heart trouble. Uh, they got her out there taking care of her. Going to be in good shape there. Appreciate it. Amen. Uh, we want to take this opportunity to welcome those that are tuned in on Facebook. Uh, appreciate you being with us today. I also remind you, at the end of the service, the announcements will be put up on the screen, coming events and so forth, so be sure to look at that. And... Uh, because of the, the uptick in 
the COVID cases in Clay County, Wichita County, we're going back to the mask and the social distance. We're not forcing you to wear a mask, asking if you would. Main thing is the social distancing. And when we go to eat today, be sure that you keep distance between you. You know, you still stand there by visiting one another. When you go out and eat, and there's plenty of room. So we want you to kind of observe those for the other person. Even if it doesn't mean anything to you, be aware of the other people and their concerns, so forth. And uh, men, this is, I mean, if your wife goes to get after you, just remind her their social distancing. <laughs> hey, got six-foot space here, you know. Use it to your advantage. Uh, also want to share with you, we've lost a couple of good men last couple of weeks. Jim Wally, who him and his wife uh, for years sat back there on this back bench. Uh, him and Mr. Bob were good friends and buddies. Passed away, I believe it was the second. And uh, they, weren't doing, they had moved down to where their daughter was, and they're not doing any services for Jim. Also, Gary McKenzie passed away. And uh, right now, it looks like they're going to do a memorial service, I think, December the 12th for Gary. We'll keep you posted on that and give you more information. Also, before we start today, this week, I believe the 12th was Veterans Day. I want all our veterans to stand. All our veterans, please stand. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. We appreciate everything you did and mean so much to us. God bless each one of you. Today's message, beginning with Matthew 21, and all things, how many things? Whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Uh, living Bible, you can get anything, anything you ask for in prayer if you believe. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. 25, and when you stand praying, forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have all against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. 24, listen to me, you can pray for anything, and if you believe you have it, it's yours. 25, this has been living Bible. But when you're praying, when you're, listen, I want you to get this. But when you're praying first, say that with me. Forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive you your sins too. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. Verse 7, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hebrews six twelve, that you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Verse 36, Hebrews ten thirty six, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God you might receive the promise. James 5, 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 1 Peter 3, 7, likewise you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered, that your prayers be not hindered. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, I ask your blessings and anointing upon this service. Father, use me as your mouthpiece. Give me the words, the thoughts, and the ideas you want shared this morning. Father, just open the people's hearts that they receive what's being said. Father, that they would apply it to their lives, and because of that, they will see you work in their midst. Father, we want to lift doors up to you. We just, in the name of Jesus, that there be no heart problems here, no uh, trouble with it that she'd have complete recovery and we ask it in jesus name amen one day a minister and his wife they had been invited to speak at a church in this town and they were met at the train station by a woman and there was a sign to drive them to their hotel as they approached the center of town the traffic was very heavy i mean you just couldn't hardly move 
You can let us out at the nearest corner, the minister suggested, said, we're never going to find a parking place. The woman said, don't worry, we'll find a parking place. She began to pray, God, we really need a parking place. Please lead us to it. She drove around the block a couple of times. Now, right there is where most people would have quit. If it wasn't there immediately the first time they went by, they'd have given up. Well, it just wasn't meant to be. But she drove around the block a couple of times. Just, then just as they turned the corner, a car pulled out of the parking space in front of their hotel. She said sincerely, thanks, God. I really appreciate this. The minister's wife, do you always ask God for such favors? Oh, yes, I talk to God all the time. She said, I just can't help it. He seems to be so close that I talk to him just the way I talk to my best friend. She said, God delights in meeting our smallest needs just as much as our big ones. And the same as any loving friend or father, friend or father, he wants to help us, to take care of us. And all prayer and all answers to prayer builds our relationship with God. In Philippians 4, 6, we just read this. It said, in everything, in everything, with prayer and thanksgiving. How many things? Everything. Not just the big, the major, but in everything. See, prayer is fellowship with God is seeking his guidance, his wisdom, and his power in your situation. Most of the time, people don't want to pray to God until they're in trouble. It's the only time they ever hear from some of us. Let me share a personal experience with you. One day I had left the house and I was running late. I had an appointment I had to go to. And as I was leaving, I got a call. It was an urgent call. And the people said, we got to come by the hospital to pray for this person. Just got to right now. Well, I was short of time. I said, okay, I'll be there. Well, as I was going there, I said, God, I want you to give me the closest parking spot that you can. When I get there, when I pull up in United Regional Parking Lot, it was the very closest spot to the hospital. I get out of my car, I walk in, as I walk up to the elevator to go to push the button, the doors open, they go right on up. And it just amazed me, I thought, I don't know why I'd ask for it, but that God would do something like that. You know, we miss so much because we don't ask God to do those things even the smallest things in our life. The Bible says this, you have not because you ask not. Do you ever feel like no one has listened to your prayers sometime? I mean, you just feel like, boy, my prayers not getting higher than the ceiling. Sometimes you ever want to say, hey, there's somebody up there listening, everybody on duty up there. I've got a big need down here. I want you to understand this. Just because your prayers are not getting answered does not mean God hasn't heard, and it doesn't mean God doesn't want you to have it. God has said in his word that there are certain requirements and conditions to get your prayers answered. And he says there are things that hinder your prayers, that keep your prayers from being answered. In reality, the problem of unanswered pro uh, prayers is you, not God, wanting you to have it. And for just a few moments this morning, I want to share with some of the major hindrances of getting answers to our prayer. You know, a lady asked me one day, she says, Brother Larry says, why are the people we're praying for not getting healed? Well, hopefully, maybe I can answer that question in a few moments this morning. We'll begin with this. 1 Peter 3, 7, it says, Men, honor your wife that your prayers will not be hindered. God's saying this, Don't think you can be abusive to your wife and you're going to get your prayers answered. Men, is your wife afraid to cross you? I mean, is she afraid maybe of physical abuse? Maybe verbal abuse? I mean, I, I've, I've ministered over the years to a lot of women that talked about the way their husband had talked to them, maybe mental abuse. And all of them will tell you this, mental and verbal abuse is a whole lot worse than physical abuse. Men, do you treat her like a second-class citizen? I mean, you're only interested in your desires, your likes, what you want to do. Do you welcome her opinion and her desires on the situations that you're dealing with? There is so much power in the prayer of agreement 
that I believe Satan's number one goal is to get the husband and wife divided. Because when they join in agreement, it's, uh, you know, if one puts 1,000 to flight, two puts 10,000, your prayers are 10 times stronger when both of you join in agreement. I also want you to understand this, man. You better realize that she is a daughter of God, and how would you feel if someone treated your daughter that way? Some of you better be blessed that God hasn't really got hold of you. Number two reason, sin hinders prayer. James 5, 6, it says, The prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. You know, it just I'm amazed at people who knowingly engage in sin and can't understand why their prayers are not being answered, why they're not experiencing uh, all kinds of deliverance from the problems they're dealing with. Let me ask you this. What is your attitude towards your disobedient children? I mean, are you just willing to jump out there and help them and do everything you can for them? Or do you have the attitude, you know, if you want to live that lifestyle, if you want to do that, don't expect me to do anything about it. I think that's the way God looks at his kids. I know I told all my kids when they were growing up, I told them, I said, if you get thrown in jail for drinking, don't you call me. Don't you call me, not even think about it. And why did I do that? For their benefit, for their safety. Not because I'm mean, but I knew the jeopardy that it was causing them and the problems. You, all you have to do is to realize what sin can do in your life is read God's attitude towards Israel when they sin. When they began sinning and got caught up in sin, he would allow their enemies to come in to defeat them and to destroy them. Yet on the other hand, when they repented and sought him, they were willing to get their lives straightened up. He would restore and he would deliver them. And I'll tell you this, God hasn't changed. He hasn't changed his mind, and he still feels the same way today. So don't think you can knowingly engage in sin, and then God's going to be Johnny on the spot to answer your prayers. You know, I'll tell you this, dealing with sin in your life is not a popular message in today's church. The feel-good messages is what fills the stadiums, and everybody applauds and so forth. You know what people's ideal in church is today? You better brought, bring me under conviction of things I'm doing. If you do, I'll go somewhere else. I'll go somewhere where they'll tell me everything is okay. I can just do as I darn well please. You know, sin breaks fellowship. Now, not sonship, but sin breaks fellowship with God. And it stops the flow of his blessing and his power in your life. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That word righteousness means right standing. You know, you're in a, your child, when they're in right standing with you, I don't know about you, but I'd bend over backwards to do things for them. If they're doing things right, and they're doing things like I've told them to do, I do whatever I can for them. Once again, James 5, 16 says, A prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If there's sin in your life, you need to confess it. And I'm going to tell you a little secret right now. If you feel like God's not going to find out about it, you confess it, you're badly mistaken. I mean, you can get that out of the way. He knows it right now. And then stop it. Quit it. You know, at the end of service, Jeff's going to be up here, and he's written a book that, boy, every, everybody needs one. But he deals, one of the subjects he deals with is the church's attitude towards grace. And there's too many people in the church nowadays, that, well, I can just sin all I want to. God's grace is going to cover it. It's not what the Word teaches. Amen. Not at all. And if you think you can do those things and get by with it, Get his book, read. He explains it a whole lot better than I do. You know, people say, well, Brother Larry, I just don't know if I have any sin in my life. I'll tell you what, you ask God to point it out, and I bet it won't take him long to show you. So if that's your attitude, that's another subject. Another hindrance to saying our prayers answered is a failure to meet the conditions to receive God's promises. God's promises come with condition. 
All his promises come with condition. I'll give you an example. We'll take salvation. It's free for all. And God says, it's not my will that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of the truth. So we know God's provided it. It's for every and every one of us, and God wants you to have it. But there are conditions before you can receive it. You have to believe Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins. Then you need to accept him as your Savior, and then you confess him before men. You know what? You can pray all day long, oh, God, please save me. God, please save me. And you know what? You're just as lost as a goose in a hell storm until you meet those conditions. You can die and go to hell praying every day for God to save you. You can't say, well, I prayed, but this wasn't God's will. If it was, I'd have got saved. Another example is financial problems. God has a condition, and most people don't like it, but it's called tithing. And we're going to rush right across that. I don't want to offend anybody. But here's the, the conditions for God to take care of your financial problems. He tells you in Malachi, he says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse. Try me, re, uh, that I'll not rebuke the devourer for your sake. Now, that's the conditions, and you can pray all day long for God to meet your financial needs, and he won't until you meet those conditions. Mark 21, 22, Mark 11, 24 is, it, it tells you go 21, uh, Mark 21, 21, and 22, Mark 11, 23, 24. What they're doing is telling you how to move the mountains in your life. Have you ever got a mountain in your life today? I mean, amen, something you need moved? It tells you how to do it. Here's the condition God lays down to get a move. And one of those we find in Matthew 22 and Mark 11, 24 is, is to believe you receive when you pray. When you pray, not when you see or feel something or things change, but believe when you pray. You know what that's called? That's called faith. That's called believing God and not your senses. It's having faith in God's word. Hebrews 6, 12 says, those through faith, say it with me, through faith and patience inherit the promises. James 5, 15, the only time in the Bible we're told to pray for the sick, and it says, the prayer of faith shall raise the sick. I'll tell you what, I think a lot of times instead of just praying for people that are sick, we need to pray first of all that God will give them faith to receive their healing. You know, in Acts it says, Paul looked at the man and saw that he had faith to be healed. Well, if you didn't need faith to be healed, why would that statement be in there? He would have just said, well, Paul saw the man, he was sick, and he healed him. No, the stipulation was the man had faith to be healed. Yet there are people get bent all out of shape when you go talking about faith and preaching it. Oh, Brother Larry, that's all he talks about is faith. I'm going to tell you this. In the next few years ahead, you better be half of faith because your world's going to get shook. And I mean shook pretty stout. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it said, In everything with prayer and thanksgiving. And thanksgiving. When do you give thanksgiving? When you pray, not when things get better. You know, once you prayed, you need to quit asking for, same, for the same thing and start thanking God. Well, I don't feel any better. Things happen. It doesn't matter. God's Word says you give Him thanks for it. You know, when we lay hands on the sick at the end of the service, from that point on, you need to just begin thanking God for your healing. Well, I don't feel better, Brother Larry. Don't go by your feelings. You go by the Word of God and begin to thank Him for it. Do you believe God is going to do something when you ask Him, when you pray? Then I'll tell you this. If not, don't ask till you can believe. That's basically what the Bible's teaching. Don't ask it till you can believe. Don't ask God for things you can't stand in faith for. In James, God said, if you need wisdom, ask him, but ask believing that he's going to give it to him. That you have faith that he's going to give you that wisdom. So you've got to meet those conditions before you're going to get those prayers answered. Another hindrance is unforgiveness. And it may be one of the major hindrances from getting our prayers answered. You know, 
I don't see how the Bible could be any plainer than on the subject of unforgiveness. In the Lord's Prayer, it says this, forgive those, forgive us as we forgive those that trespass against us. God's saying this, if you're not going to forgive people, I'm not going to forgive you. That's pretty plain. Jesus on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Mark eleven twenty five follows 22 and 23 and 24. And he says this. He says, when you're trying to get your mountain moved, when you're praying to get this done, if you've got unforgiveness, just stop praying right there. Just, just stop. And you go get that taken care of. You, you forgive. You forgive. The word says we're to love one another. That's the second of the two greatest commandments. And I'm telling you this, you can't love someone when you're holding a grudge or you have unforgiveness towards them. And the Bible teaches this. It says faith works by love. You know, someone, well, Brother Larry, you just don't know what they did to me. Well, did they hang you on the cross? Did they drive nails in your hands and feet did they expose you naked before your family and friends they did jesus yet he forgave now, now tell me what they did to you one more time for those who say i can't forgive then my question is this what unanswered prayer are you willing to accept in order to hold on to your unforgiveness what unanswered prayer are you willing to hold on to and keep your unforgiveness it's a prayer for healing for you, for maybe one of your family members. Is it a prayer that you're praying for life and you've been diagnosed with an incurable disease? Are you willing to hang on for unforgiveness and that, so that prayer doesn't get answered? Maybe it's a prayer for finances. Maybe it's a prayer for your children's deliverance. What are you willing to put up with to suffer what losses to hang on to your unforgiveness? True story. There's a lady, and she went to the doctor's office, and she had a very serious case of eczema, ex skin rash or whatever. Uh, and she was, I mean, in agony. And she also had rheumatoid arthritis. And the doctor was unable to get her any relief, so finally he, he thought maybe this is something in her, you know, in her mind or what. So he sent her to a psychiatrist. And after interviewing with her, the psychiatrist saw that there was some irritations or irritating situations in her life which was translating outwardly in the form of the skin rash that he, she had. Finally, the doctor says this. He just put it to her bluntly. He said, what is eating you? You're peeved at something, aren't you? She stiffened up like a ramrod and marched right out of his office. A few days later, she came back to you to the agony, the agony of the rash. You know, she was ready to let the doctor help her give up the hate. What it turned out to be was this. It turned out it was a family row over a will. She felt when she had been treated unfairly by a younger brother. When she got rid of the hostility, she got well. When she made up the quarrel with her brother within 24 hours, the rash vanished. Some of you today, you're suffering illness and you're suffering other problems in your life and your loved ones because of unforgiveness. Because of unforgiveness. And finally, the last thing I want to cover with today, something I don't know about you, but I certainly deal with in my life, is another big hindrance to getting our prayers answered is lack of patience. Hebrews 6, 12 said, those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews 10, 36 says, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. You know, the Bible has so much to share about patience. As you read through there, just notice how many times it talks about patience. It talks about how we need to wait upon the Lord. And the Bible has given us examples of how he's, He's taking care of and met people through their willingness to have patience. Abraham, 12 years before he got the child of promise. Most Christians can't wait 12 minutes, much less 12 years. 
David, the story of David, anoints him as king, but yet you look how long it took him before he went to the throne. Everything he had to endure. I mean, chased away from his family, his friends, had to live in a wilderness. Joseph, look at what he had to endure before he became prime minister. Slavery, prison, thrown in a pit. But yet he held on strong. He never lost patience with God. He believed what God said, and he held on and become prime minister. In Daniel 10, 13, it says that it took 21 days. God answered Daniel's prayer, but it took 21 days for it to get there. Why? It's because there's a battle in the heavenlies. And a lot of the prayers you pray now, there's a battle in the heavenlies. And here's what happens. When you quit believing, when you quit standing in faith, then God says, bring you angel back he will come back up here they've, they've got off their faith then you decide after well I'm, I'm gonna keep i'm gonna start believing god for that he sends his angel back down he's a doing battle you pull your faith off god come on back up here some of your angels look like a molten chicken he just wiped all the feathers off of him because of your yo-yo action you know we live in a microwave society fast food I mean, that's, people don't cook nowadays anymore. My granddaughter, in school this year, she's in high school, and she's taking a cooking class. Just excites me beyond measure. I told her, I said, I will come up and be a guinea pig, you know. But she can cook. But nowadays, most people, if it doesn't come through a clown's mouth, they don't know what it is, you know. And most time, you're just as well off just pull up to the window and start ordering something. Say, hey, just throw something in a bag. I'll take it, you know. You got good as good a chance of getting what you ordered. But we, we have fast food, you know. And you know what? We want fast fi uh, fixes. We want all our problems solved immediately, overnight. And we want fast fixes. And, and I'm no different. I'm not throwing stones at you. But you know what? The word teaches that patience builds faith. You know, Luke coming off this morning talking about subject, you know, uh, things that happen in our life God doesn't bring, but he allows them. That's the only way your faith grows. God's not going to put a bubble around you. Your faith is nothing but a theory till it's tested. So we deal with these things. We go through them, and God's saying, wait upon me. Just have patience. You know, do you know how most people in church pray for patience? Lord, give me patience and give it right now. You know, that's the way they pray for it. Listen, once you've prayed, here's what the Bible says. First of all, get a vision for what you want. If you're dealing with illness or sickness or something, the smartest thing you can do is get a picture of you at your prime when you look good and feel good. And I'd put it in First Peter 2.24. And I would look at that. Begin to confess it's done. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how hopeless it looks. Confess in the name of Jesus. It's this way. Refuse to give up. And have patience. Wait on God for his timing and his way to do it. Do you understand his timing is always perfect? And his way is always perfect? And if you'll just learn to have patience to those develop, you'll miss so many of the problems you're dealing with. And I'll close with this. When Jill was a little girl, every summer she'd go to her grandparents' farm. And one day as she came into the farmhouse, she could hear her grandmother talking. She could hear her voice. Well, she entered the living room cautiously because she was just certain, you know, Grandma wasn't talking to herself. There were some visitors there. But she saw that her grandmother was alone, and she was in prayer. And Jill said, you know, I felt like I was on holy ground. She said, I was amazed as I stood there and listened for a little bit to hear my name. And she said, I found out that my grandmother was praying for me. She listened as her grandmother pleaded with God to keep her safe and healthy, that she'd have a desire to follow God and become a soul winner. As she stood there, tears came to Jill's eyes, and she could just feel the love in her grandmother's prayer. 
She just eased back out. Her grandmother never was aware she was there. A few years later, a friend invited her to a youth rally. And when she was at that rally that afternoon, she gave her life to Christ. Later that night, she began to recall the prayers of her grandmother in that farmhouse. And then she suddenly realized, as tears began to flow down her face, that her grandmother's prayers had been answered. The answer had taken really a decade to happen. But the answer had come. Message, don't you ever give up. Don't quit. Once you pray, it's in God's hand if you do the conditions and meet it. What's causing you not to receive what God has promised you in his word? Is it God saying no or your prayer or your prayer is being hindered by the things you're doing or not doing? Be honest and ask yourself. Paul says to examine yourself. Have I met the conditions to get my prayers answered? Men, how are you treating your wife? People, is there sin in your life? Are you standing in faith for what you're asking God for? Are you thanking God instead of continuously asking Him for the same thing? Then this, are you harboring unforgiveness in your life towards somewhere else? I've, I've heard over the years of, of parents and children that don't talk for years over nothing that doesn't amount to anything. And then ask, am I having patience? Am I waiting on God for this? Or have I given up and quit believing him for it? Ask yourself those, examine yourself, and see as it is. Are you the reason your prayers are not being answered and not God? I'm going to ask you to stand. Every head bowed and eye closed. No one looking. There's two things that I think God is wanting to pray for this morning. First of all, some of you, the reason your prayer is not being answered is you're allowed sin in your life. I don't, and you know, there's no big sin, no little sin. But you're allowed sin in your life. And you're aware of it. You know it. And some of you said, well, I just, I don't care. But this morning, you're under conviction. You say, you know what? I've allowed this to go on in my life. But right now, I confess it to God. And I'm going to quit it. Just if that's where you're finished, slip your hand up. Amen. Amen. See those hands. See those hands. Amen. 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 And the second is this. Brother Larry, somebody did me wrong. And I have to forgive them. I'm not saying you have to go allow them to do it again. But you don't harbor unforgiveness. You say, you know... In the name of Jesus, I forgive them for that. But you're willing to this morning to say, I turn it loose. I forgive them now in the name of Jesus. Just slip your hand up. Amen. I see those, see those, see those. God sees them. Father, you've seen these hands. And Father, I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, Father, that as these steps are applied in people's lives, they're going to begin seeing tremendous results in the prayers they pray. Father, any of us, that if we not getting our prayers answered, that we would examine ourselves, Father, and say, hey, am I doing this or not doing this? And be honest with ourselves. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, for your love, your kindness, and your mercy. And Father, we thank you for blessing us so abundantly. The Word says Jesus came that we may have life in its abundance. Father, bless these people. Bless this church. We ask it in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. <laughs> you may be seated. Got just a few announcements to share. Next Sunday, Bill and Roger's going to be here. And they will do the song service, and then they will do the message. We had them back last spring. It's been so long. Uh, they're two cotton farmers from West Texas. And uh, you will enjoy them. Uh, they will bless you. So I encourage you to come and be a part of that. Uh, if, if you can't come, at least tune us in on Facebook. You will really enjoy them. At the end of the service, Jeff has got a table set up here. I don't recommend a whole lot of books. 
because uh, uh, most a lot of books 95 percent of it could be good but if there's five percent in there people always find the five percent and they worth 15 cents and they'll harp on that so i don't endorse a whole lot not because my endorsement means anything it doesn't but ev <laughs> everybody needs one of jeff's books it will make you examine yourself, and, and I really, the grace deal was just one of the things he touched on. You know, you hear the term greasy grace, and that's what we're dealing with in the churches nowadays. That's why we're in the condition we are. So they'll be up here at the end of the service, and uh, they will fix you up. If you ordered books, they're in. If you've already ordered them. Uh, if, you, if he runs out of books, uh, he'll take your name, and we'll make sure you get one. So at the end of the service... Come up and do that. Once again, the announcements are going to be on the screen. Uh, you can tune in on that. Uh, Wednesday night we have services. Brother Lou's going to do the message on that on 7 o'clock. And, and today, as we do the food line, what I'm going to ask you is, is keep a distance between you. You know, Like I say, the mask, we're not going to police you and hold you down and put a mask on you. But uh, respect, you know, people, respect other people. Respect other people's opinion. Just because you don't think they're necessary, don't ridicule or make fun of somebody else. You know, people say, oh, you're scared of the virus. No, but God's given me wisdom. You know, if somebody throws a sack full of rattlesnakes in my house, I'm not going to just close my eyes and go walking through there. I'm going to watch them. So let's be respectful of one another, and, and not only that, the government, what they've asked us to do. But as we go through the line today, in other words, just keep six, eight foot between you. When you go out and eat, we have plenty of room. Be sure you sit, you know. Just respect people's uh, rights and privileges. So we encourage you to do that. Uh, we love and appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next Sunday. And just have a wonderful and blessed day. And I'm going to ask Lynn Allen to dismiss us in prayer. Bless the food, Lynn.